Hi, it's Day to Day with St. Joseph. It's Father Barry, the host of this daily program, at least Monday through Saturday. And if you look in our bulletin for last week, there's a real good article on Joseph as a father, a sevenfold father. Uh, read the, uh, the Pasha's column there. And on the calendar, uh, we have Monday, June 28th, leading for the end of June, and then Fourth of July is next Sunday. I have this nice thing next to the calendar reminding me of my new age, 64, and a song I remember from the Beatles. And the question is, will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? So far, the good news is the answer is yes. Hi, it's Father Barry. Welcome again to our day-to-day -day with St. Joseph. And uh, as we get into this time of the year, there's some beautiful sights, you know? Like all these flowers in front of my house. Really nice, beautiful. It's almost like, it's like cotton candy growing uh, on, on these stems. Beautiful. <clears throat> and I, Wish you a good start to your day as we get going here on the videos for St. Joseph. Yeah, my mind goes to the Beatitudes again. I was thinking of the Psalms and blessed is the man, blessed are the just. And I was thinking that Joseph certainly was believing in the word, believing in that. And then he was seeing Jesus beginning to create some new Beatitudes, of which Jesus will unveil sort of a sevenfold way of living in perfection. Jesus unveils it all in the Sermon on the Mount when uh, he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit and those who are persecuted for my name and hungering and thirsting for righteousness. And blessed are the meek and the peacemakers. Blessed are the pure of heart. Blessed are those who mourn. I was just thinking of all of them and thinking of how Joseph would have seen uh, Jesus emerging with all of those and it would just rub off on Joseph. You know, Joseph is living with the anointed one, the Christ, and he's beginning to, uh, to live in the same manner. You know, I think holiness begets holiness. You're around a holy, just person, you're around a patient person, you're around a kind person. Uh, it certainly can rub off on you and with Joseph he has all these lessons with his son and also with Mary uh, in his life and I think that many uh, things start coming to mind when I think of the Beatitudes uh, I think of the many different times and ways I've learned them how about you and lessons I've got from them I remember one of the more surprising ones was uh, Robert Schuller, the TV evangelist, did a series on it, and I ended up ordering the tapes, and uh, I enjoyed uh, his series on the Beatitudes. I ended up teaching it uh, in two parishes, and I don't have those tapes anymore. I might go to them with this tape. And I'm thinking uh, how... The I've seen the Beatitudes lived out in people in my life. Blessed are the poor in spirit. I, I see people who have wanted to live the genuine Catholic life. They really wanted to live the Jesus-centered uh, life and they wanted to, to practice uh, the rites of the church well. And they wanted to go to confession and they wanted to have holy water in the house and they wanted to read their scriptures and they wanted to go on retreats. and. I think poor in spirit people have helped me to uh, order my life around, you know, the spiritual life and realizing I always need 
to, to keep growing in my spiritual life because I'm an embodied spirit. I'm a spirit being that needs uh, continual watering for me to grow and the Holy Spirit. Uh, I've noticed people are persecuted for the name who are willing to suffer for being a believer and keep, a, keep their stand in the faith. Got to admire them for that. And sometimes it means the difference of whether I'm going to practice it or not. And I've known people who are just hungry for the word, thirsty, uh, you know, for the love of God, thirsty in their life of, of relationship with God, thirsty for more. Uh, I've watched some people that have hungered and thirsted in different ways of practicing their faith, not just the spiritual things, but sometimes uh, other practices in their life. And I'm thinking, it's impacted me. It has. Uh, again, Joseph being impacted by Jesus must have been amazing. Of course, Jesus also subjected himself to being impacted by Joseph when he was a boy growing up under Joseph. Blessed are the meek, blessed are the peacemakers. You know, I think of people who um, they're not interested in, in getting all the gusto in the world and, and trying to fill all their desires or lusts up but rather thinking of, uh, of, a different, of a different existence, <laughs> the kingdom of God existence. And in the Beatitudes, you know, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who care. Uh, you know, I think of people that you know, have gone into nursing and work there. Blessed are those who are teachers, you know, that care. They mourn for the lack of education of a young person and want to make a difference in the kid's life. You know, I think of missionaries who are willing to, uh, you know, to go and, and spread the gospel or spread the, the life of living the gospel. Blessed are the pure of heart, you know, the single hearted. I think some people are again, amazing examples to me of, of staying focused on what's important in life. And there's just so many things to pull you away, so many enticements and pleasures and distractions and so many uh, worldly things that won't matter in the end, but get all our attention, all the electronic advancements and stuff. But the Beatitudes call us to something higher. Well, I have a lot more to say on the Beatitudes, and I'm going to save it for uh, tomorrow and the next day, paired with the uh, gifts of the Spirit. But I, I wanted to say, though, that Joseph, he would have watched these things get practiced in Jesus. I don't think Jesus just suddenly lives the seven Beatitudes at age 30. I think that he was living it earlier, and I think these points were discussed before with Joseph and Mary. Uh, so these Beatitudes of Jesus were something that you could say were test run or test taught uh, to Joseph and Mary. I, I think Joseph's part in the Beatitudes, too, is you just say, if he's the righteous man, the blessed man that really wanted to live the blessed is life, if he now is intercessor for us in the church, what are some of the starting points where Joseph would come and try to coach us? And I think he would try to coach us in living the Sermon on the Mount, beginning with the Beatitudes. See you tomorrow.